Hello, and welcome to this session of Hayes University, presented by Hayes Mechanical, your partner in providing best-in-class commercial HVAC, plumbing, and industrial mechanical services for over a hundred years. In this video, we will cover the chiller teardown. As always, this session of Hayes University is presented for informational purposes only and is intended to allow our clients to understand details of the skilled and professional work provided by Hayes Mechanical. The following should only be performed by properly trained HVAC technicians. In today's session, we will cover what a chiller teardown is, why performing a chiller teardown is essential for your equipment, and we will review the procedures involved with a teardown. Not all teardown procedures will be covered in this video, and some procedures may not be applicable to your equipment. So please contact your Hayes Mechanical representative to learn more about the specific needs of your system. Before we discuss the teardown process, let's talk about what a chiller teardown is and why it's so important. As the name suggests, a teardown refers to the disassembly and inspection of various critical system components. During this process, our technicians are able to test and inspect internal components to ensure they align with manufacturer specifications, inspect components for deficiencies, and replace any defective components that are found during the process. After the inspection process is complete, the chiller is reassembled with new gaskets, O-rings, oil filter, refrigerant dryer, and the oil reservoir is filled with new oil. Performing a teardown on your chiller will help maximize the lifespan of your equipment, reduce unplanned breakdowns, and maximize the efficiency of your equipment. Now, let's look at the steps involved with the chiller teardown process. Before the chiller is taken down for service, a preliminary leak check is performed with an electronic leak detector to help identify any valves or components that need to be replaced. On this chiller, we found that the butterfly valve on the compressor discharge side was leaking and needed to be replaced. An oil sample is then taken and sent to a lab to analyze the oil condition, test for contamination, and to help identify any internal component wear. After the chiller has been safely shut down, a MEG test is performed on the motor to check the resistance and condition of the motor windings. The results obtained from this test were good, so no corrective action was required. Next, the refrigerant is recovered from the chiller and stored on site. Next, we're going to remove the motor, compressor, and oil reservoir. The compressor motor on this chiller weighs over 2,100 pounds. The compressor on this chiller weighs over 2,500 pounds. After removing the compressor, it is rigged up so it can be disassembled for a comprehensive inspection. Using a dial indicator, which provides readings down to 1 1,000th of an inch, Various measurements are taken on the compressor and its components to ensure that everything aligns with the manufacturer's specifications. During this process, the bearings, impeller, shaft, gears, and other various components are inspected. During this teardown, we identified defects on the low-speed thrust bearing and thrust collar, so they were replaced. We also replaced the shaft seal because its leak rate exceeded the manufacturer's guidelines, which was an issue that was identified prior to beginning this teardown. During the chiller reassembly, O-rings, seals, and gaskets are replaced on nearly every component. After the compressor has been inspected, repaired, and reassembled, it is reinstalled on the chiller along with the motor and oil reservoir. During the reassembly process, every bolt on the chiller is torqued to the manufacturer's specifications. After the chiller has been reassembled, a trace amount of refrigerant is added to the chiller. 
Then, the chiller is charged with 200 PSI of nitrogen and is again leak checked with an electronic leak detector. The nitrogen charge is then left in for at least 24 hours to ensure all O-rings and gaskets have a tight seal. The chiller is then put under a vacuum down to 500 microns and again is held here for at least 24 hours to ensure there are no leaks. After 24 hours has passed, the micron gauge is checked to ensure microns have not risen. After passing these tests, the chiller is then charged with refrigerant. Before the chiller is finally put back in service, the condenser and evaporator tube bundles are cleaned with a brush machine to help remove any buildup or fouling on the water side of the tubes. After the tubes have been cleaned, an eddy current test can then be performed. This is a non-destructive test that provides valuable information on the condition and remaining useful life of your evaporator and condenser tube bundles. A probe which emits an electromagnetic field is placed in each tube. Changes in the electromagnetic field will help identify any defects in the tubing. Now that the chiller has been reassembled and cleaned, it is ready for startup. Upon startup, all temperatures, pressures, amp draws, and flow rates are checked to ensure the chiller is operating properly and ready to provide years of additional service. A chiller teardown, typically required at 10-year intervals, is just one of many critical maintenance steps deemed essential by all chiller manufacturers. Additional key maintenance steps are required on an annual, quarterly, monthly, weekly, and daily basis. Got questions? Hayes Mechanical has answers. Contact us today to discuss your chiller and HVAC maintenance needs, or to discuss your plans for upcoming chiller teardowns and system upgrades. Thank you for tuning in today for this session of Hayes University. If you would like to see future episodes, please follow us on LinkedIn and Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube channel.